Hi again. In the first part of uh, the review, we went over the probability theory. So we uh, just it was a refresher. I assume that again, all of you guys, you took uh, courses in uh, interest theory in uh, probability theory. And now we are gonna look at interest theory, which is the other part of the review we will do. Again, I assume that you already have solid background in interest theory, but uh, we'll go quick review that will help us when we take actuarial mathematics. Uh, uh, it will help us to refresh those uh, basic relationships that we will look at uh, now. So in this session, I mean, what I wanted to review in this uh, very short session is the idea of uh, a relationship between interest, discount and force of uh, uh, force of interest. So let's start with the reviewing the present and future values. So the relationship here, let me use different color. The relationship between uh, like if you deposit uh, like let's say period zero and period n, so one, two, n, this is the present value. If you put amount of money, this is the future value, right? They must be the future value must be higher than the present value of interest is uh, positive, right? So, and this is what we, what we assume. Now, let's try to, like, if you relate them together, it's obviously present value is, so this one will be higher. So it will, uh, present value, it will be divided by a numerator because this one is higher, right? We discount it by one plus i to n, right? Similarly, I mean, you can cross multiply or recognize that uh, uh, this can also be future value. If you are looking for the, if you have the uh, present value and you wanted to know how much you will accumulate after a period, it's again one, uh, if the present value multiplied by one plus i to n, right? This is very basic idea. But what I wanted you know to know that uh, there are two approaches here. And the two approaches, let's take one example. Example is an investor wants to get 5% interest. So the two approaches, and let's say uh, uh, the two approaches, one is, first approach is that you put a given amount of money, a given amount. And then we need to see the future value, right? It's simple. So that you put, let's say $1,000 times zero here, you put $1,000. And let's just stake it over one year, right? Over one year. And the interest rate is uh, required by the investor is 5%. Obviously, this will become, you know, 1,050, right? The investor now can take 1,050. So the amount here, 50, right? So the amount here is 50. And how we get the 5% is this 50 divided by the initial amount gives us five percent and as i said this is one approach the second approach is now the investor requires requires a certain amount amount at the end of the period So the question now you wanted to have, let's say $1,000 at the end of the year, right? So you wanted to get $1,000 at the end of the year, and you wanted to see how much you should put here, right? And interest rate as we discussed here is 5%, right? So what is, and interest rate is the same 5%, right? So what we do with this one is we discount this one back. So 1,000 divided by 1.05 let's see what it gives us i again i use the same calculator every time so i get used to calculation in one calculator if you decide to take actuarial uh, mathematics exam society of actuaries exam it's good to get the trend of the same calculator 
what I got here is nine five two three eight two four right so the investor needs to put in nine five two point three eight two four right so the amount if you would look at the amount here the difference is they take one thousand minus that amount it gives us forty seven point six nine zero four now if you divide this amount by uh, uh, like uh, by this amount it gives you i the five percent but there is another way which is a discount rate right the discount rate now we take this four seven point six nine zero four divided by end of the period the one thousand right this will give us uh, uh, not five percent it will be four point seven six nine zero four percent right? and this d is considered it's called the discount rate right discount rate you heard about it and uh, this is uh, commonly used in uh, in uh, like uh, the us in the t bills uh, usually it's uh, quoted with the discount rate right so it's usually it's uh, are uh, equated with the discount rate right so they are different and what you see is d naturally d will be less than i right because on i you divide by the beginning of the period which is the amount is less so if the denominator is less then i will be bigger but if you divide with the end of the period uh, like d then the amount will be less because the denominator will be bigger right it's basic uh, relationship so but generally let's look at the relationship between the two between i and the discount rate right so we need to look at the relationship between i and the discount rate let's start with uh, again like with zero and one so you deposit one dollar here this is for i and the one dollar becomes here you deposit one dollar here it becomes uh, with the interest it's one plus i right and the difference between them will be this minus this it will be i right because you divide by one but for the case of d now the case of d you have uh you don't invest uh, like a uh, uh, one dollar here uh, like here you, well i mean you can look at it the same logic here is you have you put one dollar here right you wanted one dollar here it's not the same thing here right and then you take the present value the present value of one dollar one over one plus i right one over one plus i this is what we call it v right v one over one plus i v right so now d will be this right but d here if you uh, are you following me so one uh, over one plus i the discounted uh, of the one dollar and d because you divide it by one whatever the amount let's look at what is d d is the one dollar end of the period subs like what we did in the previous example subtract from it v right this v and what's v is one over i one over one plus i right so this is v so this is we need to have it in your uh, uh, formula sheet this one you must always remember it right well, uh, so the relationship between d and i is one we can think of d is one minus v right this is the first uh, first relationship we wanted to look at but let's also try to find other relationship from this one let's take d is equal one minus v right which is d equal one minus one over one plus i now let's multiply across one minus one plus i divided by one plus i right so what happens this one goes out uh, with this uh, um, guy oh sorry i made a sorry i made a mistake i cross multiplied the opposite so i meant one plus i here minus one right sorry minus one so now this one will cross out with this one 
So what you have here is D equal I over 1 plus I. This is another relationship we need to remember it, or we can remember it also D equals I V, right? So this is another relationship between D and uh, uh, I and V, right? So sometimes the question will give you I and you can compute D or vice uh, versa, right? But it's also, let's look at another relationship because it's important to know many of those uh, relationships. Let's go back to the D equals 1 minus V, right? Now let's multiply both sides by I, both sides by I. So I D, I multiply by D will be I minus I V, right? And what's I V? Can we remember? Remember what's IV here? D. So if you multiply I, if you multiply I with D, it gives you I minus D. So the multiplication, the product of them is uh, the bigger one, you subtract the smaller one from it, right? So this, this, all of them, do you need to memorize them or have them in your formula sheet? Very important to know all of these facts, uh, and you know you can derive them. But if you're taking actuarial exams, you've got to do to move it quickly uh, on those calculation. So we looked at I, and we looked at D. Now there is another concept. It's called delta, which is the force of interest. And this delta is uh, here, uh, remember with I, the, uh, you divide by the end of the, uh, you divide by the beginning of the period, this you divide by the end of the period, right? For lambda is kind of continuous deposit of interest, so interest is deposited uh, continuously, right? Interest is deposited continuously. So this is our, uh, like if you put, at time zero, you put in one dollar. At time one, you get uh, the future value is one plus i, right? This can be equated with the force of interest here at time zero because it, you put one dollar, but because it's continuous in continuous uh, 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 interest rate deposit, what we will use is e. To lambda lambda t but our t is one right and those must be equal so from here we can take one plus i right because they must be equated equal e lambda so if you take ln of one plus i it gives you lambda this is we must remember it we must remember it right this is very important. Uh, everything as circle uh, must be remembered. If you put the three together, we know D is smaller than I. Lambda is somehow, it's not at the end, it's not at the beginning, it's somehow in, in the middle, right? Uh, sorry, delta, right? So if you, D is the smallest value, I is the biggest value, and because D, it divides on uh, the end, which is uh, bigger, so the denominator is bigger, this the denominator is smaller, the, and this one is the middle, right? So this is another relationship, keep it in your mind, it helps you this one to check your answer, sometimes you know it helps us to check our answers. So this is uh, like a quick review of uh, this uh, important concept, in next uh, uh, session what we would uh, look at is the annuity uh, uh, calculation. Alright, see you.